Hey y'all, it's Brandon from Voodoo Forge. I've got a fun project to do right now. Ball peen hammers. Little cruddy, used, abused ball peen hammers. They are at flea markets, they are at yard sales, they're all over the place, and they're dirt cheap. Once your hammer rack is full, you only need so many of these. Once you've got one thrown behind the uh, seat in every vehicle, you got to come up with something to do with those things. So why not make a hatchet or a tomahawk? So that's what we're doing in this one. We're going to forge this little guy and uh, harden and temper it and throw a handle in it. So let's get to it. Here is the raw material. Now I've got uh, eight ball peen hammers here that I picked up uh, today for ten dollars. If you uh, yard sales, flea markets, you, I pick these up all the time. I've already opted these two out because I I like them. <laughs> I like this one's got a ads eye on it. I like that aspect to it. it. It seems like a good hammer. It's a two pound ball peen, 16 ounce ball peen. Uh, might not use this in the blacksmith shop, but I'll, you know, you need a hammer in every vehicle. But of the six I've got left, these are all going to be project hammers. So, um, so most of them will uh, become tomahawks, which sell like that. No, it's, I'm not much of a snapper, sorry. But uh, they sell really quickly. Uh, and then a lot of them, if, if you need to make a tool or a specialized hammer, it's a lot cheaper and easier to do that out of an existing hammer head. So I might turn some of these into tools, hot cuts or something like that. But this is the one that I picked to do the, uh, what the, the project I'm doing right here, the tomahawk head. Um, I cleaned it up already to make sure it was a no name. You know, if it was a, a, a known brand, I might have thrown it in the drawer over there. But um, it, it's not, and it's had a hard little life. You can, uh, you can see right here it's damaged from somebody taking a hammer and trying to drive the head down onto the handle. That's not how you do that, of course. So to get started, um, I find it's a whole lot easier to do this entire process if I weld a rod on the ball peen and use it as my handle while I'm forging the uh, the blade uh, on the on the tomahawk. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, got her stuck on there pretty good. So let's throw it in the forge and make this thing into a hatchet. I'm going to normalize it. Uh yeah, 
I figured I'd forge out the spike before doing the, the grinding. Now I just reconfigured a pair of old tongs to hold this this way. I normally don't do new things on videos, but we're gonna give this a shot and see what happens. Okay, I, I lost the first heat on the back, but... where we are at with it. Uh, I'm going to clean this profile up a little bit on the grinding wheel first. Okay, you can see that gives us a rather thick uh, edge on the bit, so I'm going to take it down a little on the grinding wheel before I go to the sander. Okay, this has taken down the edge quite a bit. Now, if you grind too long on a grinding wheel like this, you put a hollow ground on it, hollow grind on it, where it cups this out. But uh, it's down pretty good now, so I can finish this uh, on the belt sander. Well, if you have ever been looking for evidence that I am not a bladesmith, this is the best evidence you can get right here. This is my little belt sander. It's a uh, little Harbor Freight. Uh, one by 30 rig. Uh, it, it is not for bladesmithing, uh, I, you know, but I use it for the things I need in my shop. If I was going to do a lot of bladesmithing, I'd have a 2 inch by a 72 inch grinder. I'd probably build one, or sander, I mean. But um, this is what I use, and it works fine for little projects like this. So that's got the edge cleaned up, and that's really all I'm going to do with it. It's a, it's a very steep angle, uh, and if you were using this for a, an axe, this might work for your dull side on a double bit, uh, but not, not really your, your main chopping side. But it'll, it works great for this project. So now I'm going to clean this up on the wire brush and get ready to harden and temper. Cleaned up. I've got a basic edge on it. So now I'm going to harden and temper it. First I'm going to harden it and then temper it. I'm going to do it in one step. Okay, while this is heating, let me tell you how this is going to go down. Uh, once I reach this critical temperature, I'm going to pull it out of the forge and I'm going to quench it in this oil right here. Now, as soon as I pull it out, I'm going to take this shop rag and I'm going to start cleaning the oil off of the, uh, the bit. I will then bring it over here to the anvil, set it on the anvil. I'm not going to do any forging or anything, but I'm going to take this emery cloth. This is not sandpaper. It's clothed back uh, emery cloth. This is 80 grit. I'm going to polish that bit real good so I can see the colors run. Now, I'm going to do my best to have the camera catch as much of this as possible, but I'm not going to guarantee anything. Also, the hand that I'm holding the tongs that I'm quenching with, I'm going to wear a welding glove because it does flame up real big. Well, you don't want to quench the whole thing because you're going to need that heat that's in the rest of it to temper it. Okay. 
Those colors are running quick. See the purple is almost to the edge and it's there. Now at this point, the entire thing has cooled down past critical, but I don't want to risk hardening the rest of it at all. So I'll just keep kind of gently keeping the uh, cutting edge in there and keep it cool until the whole thing has uh, cooled down enough to, to take out. Anytime I'm doing this, I use the longest set of tongs I can find. But basically, I'm just going to be doing this uh, for probably another five or six minutes. Okay, so this is cooled off enough I can touch it. Uh, time to wire brush it and uh, clean it up. Okay, I've been over to my pile of handles and found one that's close. Got to do a little uh, fitting and sanding, but uh, let's get on that. This has got a paste wax finish on it. Need to clean that off. So I'm going to put a healthy coat of boiled linseed oil on the handle. And the head. The whole thing gets it. Here's our finished product. That's a yard sale fine ball peen hammerhead into a little spike tomahawk, spike hatchet. Um, I kind of, the, the wide ones like this one, uh, to me, they resemble the black watch hatchets that uh, the Scottish black watch used. You can, you can take a ball peen hammer and put it into many different shapes. I mean it doesn't have to be a, a, a belled out blade like that. It can be more tomahawk like like this one. Um, so but that's our finished product. Alright that's all there is to it and now you've got a chopper you can chop with. Be careful that spike will get you. But uh, that really is all there is to it. Uh, this is just, I look at it as a novelty thing. Yes, it's hardened, it's tempered. You can, you can do a lot better job with this. Uh, you can uh, really do a lot better with the edge than I do. Um, you can, there, there are some folks who really make some fine ones that uh, are, are extremely nice looking, but um, it is just a fun little project. Uh, I, I, I make them, uh, every so often I make some and I uh, throw them in my my uh, uh, booth when I do shows and stuff, and they sell quick. They're uh, they're they're a good seller. So, but that is how you make them. So if you want to make one, now you can. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe to the channel. All right. I uh, hope y'all got something out of this, and y'all behave yourselves.